Uh, also, you're going to always want to assign a password per for privilege exec mode. Um, it's going to prevent unauthorized access to higher level commands, including configurations. There are two methods for this. There's the enable password and enable secret. Um, basically, the, the difference between those, they, they have the exact same functionality. The difference is that the enable password in your configuration is going to show up as a plain text password. Enable secret is going to use an MD5 hash to encode this so that if you do a show run and look at your config, you're not going to be able to decode or even mainly just see visibly what the uh, the password is. So it gives you a little bit of um, security in the event that someone does gain access to your, your router. Um, my kind of thought on it as well, if someone gains access to your router, it's you know it's kind of game over already. But um, at least you know they're already going to be in enable mode likely. But uh, at least it does provide some kind of security if a you know configuration files laying around somewhere they're able to get access to. Um, if you use both commands. Um, in, a, in a router, you know, regardless of which order you use them in, the enable secret is going to take precedence over the enable password. So uh, keep that in mind. The, not a good idea to put both of them in, but in the event that you do or somebody does, keep in mind the enable secret is going to be the one that it actually uh, needs for your enable mode password. So uh, the, the command structure is really simple for enable password. It's from global configuration mode, enable space, password space whatever you want your password to be. This is uh, case sensitive. You put spaces in there, that kind of thing. Those are going to be included too, so make sure you're, you're careful when you're entering in whatever your password is. And then for enable secret, it's identical to this, but instead of password, it's secret here. So enable space secret space and then the, the password that you want to put in there. Um, so we'll go ahead and jump over to our router here. Enable password. Password say password is the password and we'll go ahead and do the uh, enable secret as well um, do show run. and so you can see that uh, enable secrets is the one that it's going to use this thing down here is completely unimportant because you've got an enable secret but the uh, you'll notice the enable secret can't read the plain text on that it's got a pretty uh, secure algorithm md5 hash that going to be very difficult to crack, if not impossible. Um, and so, in your enable password here, although it's going to show up in the config since you've got an enable secret, it doesn't really matter what it is. Uh, so, oh, and I already discussed this a minute ago. When enable password and enable secret are both using the same config, enable secret takes precedence. Uh, it's also possible to encrypt all plain text passwords in a config by using the following command, service space password dash encryption. Um, so if you enter that command into your config, anywhere you've got a password, whether it's your, one of your LineCon passwords, the password to get into your router, the password for enable mode, it's going to use a, a, a kind of simple Cisco level encryption, so that at least it's not plain text. Now if it, you do encrypt it that way, it is very, too, very easy to decrypt. You can um, just grab passwords and put them into these Cisco 7 decryptors all over the internet and tell you what the, the plain text password is, but at least it does give you a, a slight sense of, you know, maybe not uh, righteous security that you've, uh, th that uh, it's not going to be in plain text at the very least, so. That's assigning a password for privilege exec mode. And then moving on to domain name specific commands, um, DNS servers save us the trouble of memorizing all IPs on our network. Um, they map IPs to host names for network devices. Um, so, you know, if if you can't remember all of the IPs on your network and if you get a complex network many times you will not be able to you might want to assign host names that uh, correspond to each of those um, IPs that way you can more easily access those so if you wanted to use a DNS without a DNS server uh, you can create static entries for host names in each router uh, this is the command structure for that IP space host space in this case the the name of this device is going to be core router with capital C space and then the IP address for that uh, core router device is 172.16.1.1 um, <coughs> uh, when there are too many hosts to statically configure in each router you'll be better suited to create a DNS server to manage the, these IPs and host names and it doesn't take long before you've got too many um, host names to where you know too many sets of host names and IPs that trying to statically configure those on each uh, network uh, device that you've got becomes way way more tedious than even trying to remember the IPs so uh, at some point you're probably going to want to set up a dedicated server that has all of the mappings of IPs to host names that way you don't have to worry about um, each of your devices managing that 
Um, to specify DNS servers, I use the following command. Um, so in this case, you know, our router's name is Osiris. For global configuration mode, it's just IP space name dash server space, and then the IP address of each of your servers. Uh, in this case, we've got three, you know, just separated by spaces. You can uh, put up to six in here, um, no problem. And uh, you know, obviously, like host names are going to be, you know, outside of like your your particular network equipment. The public internet uh, obviously uses host names. You know, www.yahoo.com. That's not the direct way of getting that. It's going to have an IP address that, that routes to uh, www.yahoo.com, but they upload that data, that IP address uh, with their domain name into various DNS servers, and DNS servers feed off of each other, you know, to find out what what all of the uh, the mappings are, so that you know people can easily go to a browser, type in a URL, and not have to worry about trying to figure out what the IP address of a very you know some random website is. Um, to disable DNS, use the following command uh, from config uh, mode again, no space IP space domain space lookup. And then uh, <coughs> to assign your router to an IP domain, it's going to be IP space domain dash name space and then your domain. This doesn't actually have to be a, a URL, I just use mine because I actually do have a URL. Um, this, uh, this command is actually going to be pretty important when we start talking about SSH. You have to have a, an IP domain set up on your router to uh, enable SSH to work properly. And speaking of uh, enabling SSH, um, SSH is a secure protocol for accessing equipment. It's just like Telnet except that it is, uh, it is encrypted. So, you know, Telnet, you connect to a device and you're sending commands and passwords and stuff back and forth. All that stuff's in plain text, whereas SSH it, uh, it encrypts that with a pretty secure form of encryption so that um, you know, if someone were to sit in the middle and look at the, the uh, commands you're putting into a router or some other device uh, back and forth on SSH, they're not going to be able to easily decipher what you're typing. Um, it requires assigning an IP domain, as we just did uh, moments ago, uh, and it also requires creating an RSA key. Um, so you see the, the command structure right there, uh, crypto, space key, space generate, space RSA. And then uh, finally, it requires a username and password for accessing the router. And that's going to be you know, the username space, whatever your username is, space password, and then whatever you want your password to actually be. So going back, you've, you've got to have the IP domain name. So we'll go ahead and, and set that first. Uh, IP domain dash name. And we won't put the same thing. We'll just put whatever we want. In this case, it'll be Funville, um, and then uh, once we get that done, we've got to you know, right here generate our, our RSA key. So, crypto key generate RSA, and once you do this, it's going to ask you a series of questions. Oh, it's actually only going to ask you one question: um, the how long you want your your key to be. This is basically the number of uh, bits for the encryption. Um, 512 is a little bit low. There, there's actually some some things out there. It's pretty difficult, but can decrypt uh, decrypt 512-bit uh, passwords or keys. So uh, usually a standard uh, that people people use is 1024. That's what I'm going to use here. Uh, but you can go up to 2048 if um, if you feel that it's uh, needed. Then you'll see it go through this little process of actually generating the RSA key. And you'll see a, a line message uh, that it's it, SSH has been enabled. <clears throat> but as I said before, you do have to have a username and password on your router. So, uh, you know, in this case, put a, uh, a username. Uh, let's go with something very simple and password. We'll also put uh, Cisco for the password. I do not recommend putting your username and password as admin uh, Cisco. Uh, you you definitely want this to be. Um, a lot more uh, secure than that. So, you know, on your on your own routers and actual environments, don't don't follow what I'm doing here. Put something a lot more complex as a password. So we got your username and password. So, presuming we had IP connectivity to this router, which we don't currently, I'm just connected up to the console port. Um, SSH would be enabled.